that we would go into parks and drill of all places. It's about two or three percent of the land in the state of Ohio. Is nothing sacred? Uh, do we not value anything by way of our lands in Ohio where we would allow fracking to go in and adulterate that land? And, and I love this phrase, I'm going to use it. Once you frack, you can't go back. The damage is done. And so once you go on site and you start to do that drilling, there are environmental impacts that are long-lasting, never mind all the immediate pollution and impacts to the environment. And, and I don't mean to overemphasize it, but the roadways leading in there, now think about that. You're sitting with your family, having your picnic at the state park, and here come the trucks. Here come the trucks carrying the water in and out of the site. I mean, is that what you expect as your experience on a state park land? Uh, I don't think so. And, and it, I do wonder, it does occur to me, and I'm sure it's occurred to everyone else, that the public is simply not aware yet of what's going on. I think, and we were um, raising the issue, obviously, back in the budget when we were offering amendment after amendment to try to pr protect these lands. Um, you know, and we were trying to push out information. You can only do so much. Uh, but uh, I do wonder if once this activity begins in public parks, if we are going to hear an outcry from the people that utilize those parks and live nearby as to what this legislature has allowed to happen and their reaction to that. Um, and, and I think we're going to hear it. And you're, and you're looking at it. This is it. Uh, so I think the, the loud voices will start to chime in, and hopefully attitudes will change. Can somebody talk about this idea that uh, at least with the drilling in the park, uh, once it's once that site is nominated, I guess as you put it, there 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 will there be public hearings, or was this just a comment period? Sure. The way the statute's written, there. There's an opportunity to submit comments, a uh, minimum of 21 day period, it could be longer. Uh, the statute provides that, that the leasing commission will hold a meeting uh, to decide whether or not to actually approve a nomination. I, it would be great if that language was, was clearer. Uh, it doesn't say a, a public hearing or meeting, so it's, it's not entirely clear if the, if the hearing would be mandated. If I could just speak to that, also the committee has not been yet, so we're not sure who has been appointed to those positions, and there will be one representative from an environmental or uh, citizenry group. So it's really critical that the, the, the uh, deck is stacked on, on that commission with regard to real estate and the oil and gas industry being represented on that. The governor makes, or the, the uh, director makes the final decision. Can you comment again on these these red sites here? How many of them are there, and how are you how are you designating those? There's definitely going to be drilling. There may be drilling. Uh, what what's what's your understanding of what those sites are? And how many are there? Um, the sites on this list, I think we have 17 um, on the list. Uh, this, this list was obtained. We got this via email from our public records request that we had to sue the environment for records. Um, so these were on, these were indicated in, in an ODNR email conversation back in, uh, I think it was October, um, as being the, sort of the, the initial lands that ODNR would offer up to have uh, fracking take place on. Um, so I think the process is, and they can correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, the oil and gas companies would have to formally nominate these um, for, for fracking. Uh, these are the ones that we and R has identified as being the, being the best places for the oil gas companies to go. So it doesn't necessarily mean that companies are going to say, I want to drill there, but at least they feel. Right. We, you know, we put them up here today because we think it's important for the public to know, you know, if these lands are in the backyard, they probably want to know that they're under consideration. Doesn't ODNR say that, I mean, the, the emails, this is just an informal list made by some people who don't have the ultimate authority to do this. This isn't a real accurate list of places where there might be fracking. Um, ultimately, it's this leasing commission or whatever that's going to make those decisions. I mean, how do you respond uh, to that? Uh, the, the emails are the best indication that we have at this point as to what they're thinking and where they're thinking about drilling. Um, obviously, that could change between now and the time somebody decides to put a rig on the site. But, um, you know, I think the fact that the identified these lands early on in their process is a pretty good indication of where we're likely to see um, drilling take place first. I 
think also if you'll ask the department, they'll tell you uh, that they've been having to go uh, just record by record, courthouse by courthouse, going through their records. Something, an issue we kept raising in the debate was, the state of Ohio doesn't, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't necessarily own all the mineral rights for all these lands. And the department agreed, yeah, we got to search all those titles, we got to search all, search all those records. We so, suspect, I've asked the department to confirm, that this is kind of the first wave of where the department has completed some of those surveys. Now, we all know that the Marcellus Formation is in the extreme eastern part of the state, a dozen or so counties, but it's some 40 counties, according to Ohio Department of Natural Resources, that are underlain by the Utica Formation, almost half the state here. And so we expect by the time we get done here, uh, a few years, a uh, decade or so, this is going to look more like a Soviet missile map in the United States, pockmarked with all kind of drilling sites all over the country. I also want to point out the uh, before and after drilling the state parks, and you'll see uh, up above, before, uh, down below, after, and you'll see up above here, uh, you know, you've got land that's set aside for enjoyment of the public. After is exploitation for the very few, for the industry. Uh, above, above, you've got a little pool, a swimming pool there for kids and families. Down below, you've got a settling uh, pond for tainted toxics. And finally, yes, they both have parking lots, that's true. The one up above, the before, is uh, folks coming in for picnics, maybe packing a volleyball, hiking shoes. Down below, drill pits, you know, it's a warehouse for toxic chemicals. It is a truly industrial site of the first scale, first order, completely incompatible with our state parks. And this is an artist's rendition of uh, sort of how close um, the drilling would take place to a camping area. In the initial BMPs we saw from Lodi and I were talking about a potential 300 foot setback. And as you can see here, 300 feet is really not that far from 